I am Louis Reed, General Manager and Executive Vice President of the WDSU Broadcasting Corporation in New Orleans. What you just saw were scenes, which in themselves were fragments of a much larger story. The story is of school integration in the Deep South. It is a story involving not just segments of the community, but the community as a whole. What you are about to see is the role our station played in covering this story as it happened in our community and how we ourselves participated in that story. The role of WDSU-TV in New Orleans can be divided into two major segments on the school story. One was coverage of all developments in the school crisis on regular newscasts and on special in-depth programs. The other was the expression of our own viewpoint through station editorials. News coverage meant covering every aspect, every angle. For example, the state legislature meeting an almost constant special session in Baton Rouge, 80 miles from New Orleans, and on daily newscast, our community could see, for example, a legislator attacking the possible promotion of the federal judge who had ordered integration in New Orleans. Believe when we pass this resolution, he doesn't have a snowball chance in hell of getting ever promoted to any pallet court. And I want to say this, and I hope the paper will take it down. I don't want to hear our senators try to say well, we'd like him promoted to get him out of the way where he'll do the least harm. If he gets promoted up there, he can do harm. Let's keep him down here and crush him in his own selfish, arrogant mind where he wants to get promoted up. I don't know of a better way to hurt an ambitious man than to keep him from being promoted. Another example, interviews with legislators. After the election was over, and the, of course, the block vote to help elect uh, President Kennedy, now they are knocking all this over in the Delaware case, and now in Louisiana, they are saying the pupil placement law is not worth the paper it's written on. I always knew it wasn't worth the law, it was uh, the paper it was written on, and now you'll have wholesale integration in the parish of Orleans in the entire state of Louisiana. It's up to the state to provide a freedom of choice and association for each and every child of this state. I am State Senator Adrian Duplanche of New Orleans. During my service in the Louisiana legislature, many serious and profound issues have been presented to us, issues including matters affecting our public schools, proposals to increase taxation, such as the sales tax issue, proposals involving government financing and administration, and even a proposal to bar the television cameras from our legislative sessions. I am firmly convinced that the broad coverage which has been given to these legislative sessions, including live coverage of our sessions by WDSU and other television stations, has provided the public with a fine insight into the actual workings of the legislature and also has given the public an unusual opportunity to be informed on these serious issues. I am convinced that television affords an unusual opportunity for benefit in the community by providing this coverage and this information concerning these serious public issues. News coverage also meant meetings of various groups, elected and otherwise, who were involved in the story. One of them was the Orleans School Board. I am tired of hearing the state superintendent of education say that he is trying to help the employees of the Orleans Parish School Board get paid when every act of Superintendent Jackson has been a, an act to keep our payrolls on an uneven basis. Another was the segregationist citizens councils. It is being engineered by the communists, the socialists, the pinks and the punks who have wormed themselves into influential positions in this nation. The whole effort is to destroy the virility and the strength of the American nation and the American people. The school crisis was also examined in a series of special half-hour programs all shown in prime time. These programs discussed everything from the viewpoint of the Negro to the school situation in other states. One program dealt with Virginia and featured an interview with Governor Lindsey Almond. 
Governor Allman, I wish you would describe yourself in connection with segregation problems. Do you consider yourself a moderate or segregationist, or just how do you put yourself in a niche? Uh, for the cause of public education in Virginia, uh, I am a segregationist. I believe and have long felt that indiscriminate uh, mixing of the races in the public schools will have a very deleterious effect on the administration of public education at the state level. However, I think I might be termed as a realist because we fought this battle in Virginia, fought it to the bitter end, and we came to the end of the road where our only alternative was to close down our great system of public education or to meet the situation and try to contain it and regulate it as much as possible and that is the program in effect in Virginia today. I could not bring myself to believe that any state could afford to destroy its system of public education uh, fighting a battle which had been predetermined and decided against it when it could not prevent integration uh, to some extent in its public school system. This year, with more school integration facing New Orleans, a reporter and cameraman went to two other cities in the South. Their purpose? To see how other cities were preparing for the situation that confronted New Orleans last year. This is Atlanta, Georgia. Here on August 30th, four all-white high schools will be desegregated in the 11th and 12th grades by 10 Negro students. Generally, the people of Atlanta are ready to accept this thing and are ready to demonstrate to the world that Atlanta is indeed a part of this nation and a part of the world. This is Dallas, Texas, where after a six-year legal fight, school desegregation in the first grades of public schools begins September 6th. The people of Dallas are aware of the disorders and the dislocations that have occurred in other cities. And we're determined that it shall not happen here in Dallas. We feel that our citizenship is responsible and that they're rational and that this program of desegregation that we're going through with this fall will be done in an orderly, peaceful manner. I'm Dr. Leonard L. Burns, director of the United Clubs Incorporated. I am very proud of the part that uh, WDSU-TV is playing in New Orleans and has played during the uh, New Orleans crisis of last year. This station has uh, given some unbiased and factual programs to the people of this community. The editorial policy of this station is very factual and covers, covers every phase of community life. The most outstanding phase of the programming conducted by WDSU TV this year uh, has been the tale of two cities dealing with the Atlanta and the Dallas school crisis. This has been responsible for creating the atmosphere that exists in New Orleans at this time. I am very proud of the role that WDSU TV is playing at this time. It is to be congratulated for the splendid type of programs that it has given for all of the people in this community. Through our special shows in our regular newscast, we believe our community was kept informed of the school crisis as it unfolded day by day, month by month. In this aspect of our programming, we took no sides and we made sure that all sides were represented. In our editorials, we stood for open schools, for law and order, and for a moderate approach. Here are excerpts from two editorials broadcast almost exactly a year apart. In the opinion of this station, there is no substitute for public schools as a foundation for two things Americans hold vital, democracy and prosperity. Closing the public schools, as Little Rock and Norfolk discovered, is a form of slow suicide. We think it's time that New Orleans tell Dallas and Atlanta and the rest of the world that the image of New Orleans presented last year was no more than a temporary lapse. This city is not a bedrock of fear, disorder, and violence. If there's a lesson to be learned from Atlanta and Dallas, it is this. When the community joins together, it speaks with a louder voice than the shrill words of those who would seek to cause disorder and violence. For every editorial on the subject, 
we offered and sought out equal time. Here is an excerpt from one equal time reply. For you who are uncertain, including the station, let me allay your uncertainty. To you who desire to integrate the schools under the false banner of keeping the schools open, let me promise a checkmate to your ambitions. To you, the general public who do not want integration, let me provide a bright ray of hope. What has happened in Virginia and Arkansas is of no moment to us here. Because segregation was not maintained in these states does not mean that it cannot be maintained here. Our situation is unique because our laws are unique. What the various media of communication are selling the people is the inevitability of integration and the hopelessness of our cause. I am Lloyd Rittner, former president of the Orleans Parish School Board and still a member of the board. In my opinion, WDSU did an outstanding job in reporting the school integration crisis in 1960. Not only was their reporting factual and interesting, but it indicated that they were very courageous in taking the stand that they did. Certainly no other news media that I know of in this area took the positive stand to keep schools open at the time when WDSU did, at a time when it may have meant a loss of business. It is hard, of course, to measure the exact impact on our community of WDSU TV's coverage of the school crisis. We know that people watched us, that they turned to us to find out what was happening not only in New Orleans, but in Louisiana and in other states as well. It is also a matter of record that when the crisis first began developing more than a year and a half ago, our station made its editorial position known long before the newspapers in the city did. If there is credit to be taken then, it is in the knowledge that we helped inform the public at a time when an informed public was needed in order to face this crucial issue. 